Hey guys, it's Dan Booknook Noggin. I guess it's that time. It's that time again. Because every time he hears me talking, he knows what's going on. <laughs> Come on, Tim, get up here. Okay, so I want to talk about um, a movie that I was I was so psyched to hear that this movie was being produced because, like, I'll admit, I liked I liked the two of the three trilogy films. Um, let's just throw it out there: Jeepers Creepers. Um, I want to throw out a disclaimer. I don't know what the director of the original trilogy had done to be canceled, nor do I care. Because I'm not a mega fan of Jeepers Creepers, but I did enjoy the first two films. Um, I enjoyed the first two films enough that I was excited when I heard they were making Jeepers Creepers Reborn. So I was like, yeah, it's no it would be nice to see you know, this franchise coming back. So I was excited when I saw the trailer, um, but I finally got a chance to see Jeepers Creepers Reborn. It is on Hulu if you absolutely gotta see it. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it was a horrible, horrible disappointment. Um, yeah, like, it had a bad script. <laughs> Bad, horrible acting, which I, if you go and read the reviews of Jeepers Creepers Reborn on Letterboxd, you're going to see so many people were just, like, tearing this film apart. Because, I mean, I understand low budget. Low budget, I understand that. But, like, this was beyond bad. Like, the, the acting was terrible. Even the soundtrack was horrible. Like, they didn't even use the the original Jeepers Creepers song that he always plays on his little, like, turntable there, you know? His record player. No, they played some off-brand fucking garbage song, and I'm just like, what is going on? But yeah, there were a couple of plot holes because, you know, this time around... The Jeepers Creepers character, whatever he's supposed to be, is back, and the whole town's in on it. And they never explain why the town is cool with this and how they know. But I'm gonna be real here. Let's let's stop stop the train because I want to say, okay, the films, the way they're filmed in the time periods, they don't make any sense because it's supposed to be every 23 years. But yet it always seems like in the films it's always been like 5-10 years. So like there's no real continuity to begin with. But like I feel like this latest film was just so bad. It was it was terrible. Um, I didn't notice it when I was watching it. But someone had pointed out that some of the actors are British. And... They kind of go off character and they accidentally slip their British accent. So that's kind of funny. But yeah, it was terrible, guys. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Like I said, it's on Hulu if you absolutely must check this film out. That's going to be the only bad film I'm really going to talk about. Let's get on. Let's, let's clear the atmosphere. Let's talk about some great films I saw. Um, Violent Night. Yeah, I know it's... Two months past December now, I finally got a chance to see Violent Night. I did want to see it in the theater when it was out, but things just didn't work out that way. Um, this one's on Peacock, and it's totally not what I had expected, but that wasn't a bad thing because I absolutely love this film. And even at one point, like, near the end, I was like, this is kind of a little campy, it's a little corny and cheesy, but I don't care, because I love it. I love it. Yes, um, Violet Night, it's not about a dude dressed up as Santa kicking ass. No, it's really Santa Claus. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this was a great film. I really, really, really enjoyed it. Definitely, if you have not seen this one, go check that one out. Um, another film, I'm going to be, this is going to be the last film I talk about, but um, the original is called Cerdita. It is a Spanish, uh, Spanish film. 
it's a Spanish origin film. Uh, this is a horror film that came out in 2022. It originally came out in 2018 as a short film, I guess. And it only told so much of the story. But I guess that the director, she thought that that one was well received enough to go ahead and expand on this one. Uh, Sardita is, uh, it's Spanish for piggy. And it's about a girl who's really, really obese and... Yeah, a bunch of people in her town, because it's like a little town in Spain, and they, like, pick on her relentlessly. Like, these people are flat out just straight-up assholes. Like, it's one of those kind of, like, revenge films where, you know, the girl's being bullied, and you kind of, it's like a revenge thing. And that's all I'm going to say about that, but, like, I don't want to go too in-depth with that one, because it's, like, I feel like if you've seen the trailer, you've pretty much seen the film. But there's a few minor details. But I know that on Letterboxd, a few people thought it was just okay. I really enjoyed this one. I liked it. I thought it was good. Um, I saw the English dub version. And the English dub version is kind of annoying. Because I hate when they always use like really obnoxious voices. I don't know why they do that. So I'm going to re-watch it later with my wife. Because my wife is a Spanish major. And she likes watching Spanish films. She's not a big horror film. She likes to watch them every once in a while. So I'm trying to convince her to check this film out. So I'm going to re-watch it. The Spanish original version without the English dubs. Because sometimes translations like are not accurate. So I kind of want to see the original. Just to see if there's anything different to interpret from it. But yeah... Those are the films so far. We're going to take a break and then we're going to come back and talk about the books that I'm reading. Okay, we took a little break. We took a little interlude, I guess you could say. Um... <laughs> I had all intentions of coming back yesterday and finishing up this video, but things happened and I couldn't get to it right away, but let's carry on. Let's carry on and I'm kind of glad that I did have that little break because I decided to watch another film last night before we get to the books that I've been reading. Let me take a little sip of my birch beer. I guess I, I heard someplace that supposedly birch beer is like a Canadian thing, but yet we have it here in upstate New York. I know it's not like a, <laughs> it's got to be like a regional thing, right? But um, yeah, I saw this last night. I'm still like, what the fuck did I see? Oh my god, guys. If you have seen this, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, this is, uh, who was the director for this? Let me see. God almighty. Who directed this again? Oh, the writer-director of Ex Machina and Annihilation. Where is his name? Her name or whoever's name is it? Oh, Alex Garland. Yeah, so this was really out there, guys. Um, yeah, <laughs> really, really strange. Um, the whole, I, I, this may be a spoiler if you have not seen it, but it was just kind of, it seemed like it was trying to be like, let's see how weird we can get. And the whole birthing scene, the back vagina was just a little over the top. And that's all I'm going to say, but it was just really 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 strange um i did not really care for this all that much i gave it a two and a half star rating it's really weird really really weird so yeah i watched that last night um i finished this the other day this is homesick pilots volume three and this is the end of the homesick pilots series i guess um I wanted to talk about this. I'm not going to do a review of it, so that's why I'm bringing it here in the from the nook because I wanted to let you guys know about this. Um, I love the volume one, volume two for the series, 
But this, like, I get it. They wanted to wrap up and end the series, and they did that with this one. Um, the only strong point that I really, really liked from this was they introduced a final ghost, and the ghost was, like, it had a tie to the James house, and it was really interesting, that part of the story. But the way they ended it, they kind of had, like, this, uh, is it, what is it, Gojira, Godzilla, you know what I mean, it kind of had that epic showdown kind of battle that ended it, and then, like, things happen, and then the house is settled, and yada, 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 and, like, sad, disappointing ending that I really did not, ugh. I gave it a 3 out of 5 star rating of Goodreads, sad, I, I just did not like this ending for this for this series. I was kind of hoping, expecting more. I was maybe hoping for a longer run. Yeah, I don't know why they did it like that. But I wanted to mention that because, like I said, I loved the first two volumes. Um, today, I just finished this Black Like Me by John Howard Griffin. Um, this is an experiment. This guy is Caucasian, obviously. He's a white guy. Um, he did this back in 1959, He, um, which I didn't even know was a thing. But somehow he found a dermatologist to get him some pills to darken like his skin, make him look like he was black, and like did a bunch of other stuff. And like he did it to try to study like and see if blacks are mistreated and if, you know, like, are people racist against them based on the color of their skin. I'm not going to review this. I just don't feel comfortable um, reviewing this, but I thought it was a really, really good read. Um, I gave this a 4 out of 5 star rating on, on Goodreads. I really got something out of it. Um, it was, it was, you know, it takes place in 1959, and then I kind of was thinking, I kind of want to hope that in the 2000s that, you know, we're not still dealing with this kind of stuff, but then I listened to um, an afterword that was related to this book, and how the author was talking about how, like, after he did the book, they went through all these issues, because it was like the civil rights in the 60s, and how they went through all this trouble, and then it made me think, because of some of the things that people were doing against them, were kind of things that I was hearing about with the BLM. You know, like people were trying to spread rumors and gossip that there were going to be riots and fires and looting and oh my, and just to scare and rile people up, and that was kind of the same stuff going on back here. So it's like, have we really progressed all that much? And we kind of like to think that we have really progressed, but then we're still dealing with stuff like that, even in the 2000s. That's all I wanted to say about that. But like, yeah, I I just don't feel like I could do this adequate justice if, if I try to review this. But I'm going to go tell you, um, go read this. Um, I, usually, I wanted to read this for you know, Black History Month, and I usually try to read a bunch of books for Black History Month. This is something I've had sitting on my shelf for years, and I was like, I better get to that. I finally should get to it. This is a really old copy. It says the 16th big printing. But yeah, definitely, I feel like this is something that you should go read. Go check it out. It's interesting to say that much, at least. I'm still reading, um, Perks of a Wallflower, but I kind of, I kind of put it on hold. I just really am not feeling it right now. I don't want to, I haven't read it in a few days, I think. I don't know how long it's been. It might, it's possibly been maybe a week since I picked it up last. It's been a while. Um, I probably should pick it up and start reading it some more so I can finish it. I'm over halfway through with it. I'm still working on... On the Savage Side by Tiffany McDaniel. Um, I've gotten a little bit further in that one. I like how she kind of introduces some characters to try to like make it seem like they're they're the villain in the story, and maybe that's the person who's killing the people that are that are found in the water. But I don't really know if that's just me thinking that. Like if she's kind of, it's maybe just a you know a driving force to keep the story interesting. I don't know. Um, that one I'm still kind of like, eh, it's kind of okay. I Like I said, I read other stuff by her that I thought was better. This one is just not as strong as her other works. It's kind of weak for me.
But yeah. Oh, and I'm currently reading another comic that I may or may not do a review for that one. I think it's called King of Spies. That one, Mark Millar, and I don't know if it's Mark Millar or Mark Miller, but yeah, that one's kind of interesting. It's really good. It's about a guy who was a spy for so many years, finds out he's got, a, a, you know, cancer, and he's only got six months to live, and he's like, well, I'm going to take out the bad guys since I know all this dirty shit that people have done. Um, it's kind of like, you know, like a Robin Hood-esque kind of story, and I, yeah, I like it. I like it. Like James Bond going rogue, you know, like that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's all I'm really going to talk about in this video. I'm going to try to incorporate between the last video of me talking and this one, a little scene. I have some like stuff that I filmed and I'm going to try to piece that into there. But yeah, this is going to be all I got for you for this in, from the nook. Yeah. Um, of course, as always, I'm going to try to include, you know, a link to Amazon, you know, because i got to pay the bills, as they always say. <laughs> and I'm going to throw down my coffee link if you can donate to that. And if this is your first time stopping by, hit that subscriber button and hit that notification bell. That's enough of me rambling. i got shit to do, guys. i got to go. So, till next time, later.